Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Eating United Methodist Church. We're glad to have each of you here this morning, and we have a special welcome if you're a, a first-time visitor. And we hope you will join us uh, in the fellowship room across the hall from the Narthex. I'm Margaret Clonch, and I will be your liturgist this morning. Let's uh, prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the prelude. First scripture this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 through 16 and it's from the Common English Bible and it can be found on your screen or on page 719 and 720 in your uh, pew Bible. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how will it become salty again? It's good for nothing except to be thrown away and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put it on top of a lampstand, and it shines on all those who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people so they can see the good things you do and praise your Father who is in heaven. Now 
Our gospel lesson this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And it can be seen on your screen, and this is taken from the uh, New Revised Standard Version. This is the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. The word of God for the people of God. Okay, boys, listen up. The, uh, the preacher wants to say a few words. Thank you, Coach. Make it good. Read the highlight right there. Yeah. This day, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down. So that all on earth know that there is a God in Israel. And David reached into his pocket. And he pulled out a stone and he slung it and it struck the Philistine in the head and he fell. You know what's going to happen? You're going to win this game tonight. You hear me? Yes, sir. You're going to win this game. You want to know how I know that you're going to win this game? Because it's not about you. Nobody out there knows what's happened with this team. But when you win, on this day, they will. When you do what everyone said is impossible, they will. Yeah. When you strike down this giant, yeah. they will. Yeah. And when they find out how you did it, then all the earth will know that there is a God in Israel on this day. So clips from Woodlawn and uh, the football team, if you you missed that uh, last week, the football team who uh, became a football team united in Christ, um, racially divided by... um, um, by being forced to uh, come together as um, schools together, white and black, but they became united in Jesus and everything changed. And so we will hear more about that, but that is um, where that comes from, that true story based on a true story uh, that happened in the 70s. And so today we, we uh, continue with uh, part two of this, this series about one, one hope, one dream, and one way. And we talk about the cost of following Jesus. And as you looked at the, or listened to the Beatitudes and looked at them, Jesus is gathered on the mountain and he's talking to his disciples and he, he says, look, this is what's going to happen when you're poor in spirit For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And so Jesus is preparing his disciples. He's teaching them about about how to live. And he teaches us in the same way. And Paul also is good about teaching and, and taking things that happened to him and counting them as opportunities for him to be witness of Jesus Christ. 
And so, what is the cost? And we, um, what is the cost of actually being followers of Jesus? And what does that mean to us? And so, there's a tendency to dwell on the benefits and gloss over the responsibilities. We are excited about salvation, but not so pumped up about sacrifice. And sometimes that that happens that we are excited about what God has to give to us. But what about the parts of sacrifice? And many of you already know about what it means to sacrifice and how you actually grow in that sacrifice and um, your life is, is better in that space. Revelation 2 says, Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Well, there's a wonderful story about a pig and a hen. Pig and a chicken, a pig and a hen. And um, they were walking by this church. And the church had a wonderful fundraiser. And the fundraiser was going to go to a good cause. And it was about, then they were serving bacon and eggs. And so they were talking. And uh, you might have heard the story before. But the chicken says to the pig, hey, this is a great cause. We should do something to help out. And the pig candidly replied, no way. For you, it's just a contribution. And for me, it's a total sacrifice. And so uh, therein is uh, how, it, how it is, a contribution or a sacrifice, just a fun uh, little story. And so when sacrifice becomes a lifestyle, more than an event, that's how we live our lives in that space of of giving sacrificially to others of ourselves, putting others before us and putting the Lord first and foremost. And so doing that, and you probably can think about people in your lives that have put themselves before, have, have been sacrificial towards you. And I think about my parents and, and how I was raised and that they would put uh, my brother and I before they would put themselves. And that's how they loved us and loved us unconditionally and were there for us. And that's, that was sometimes I'm sure that there were, um, that w they would, they would sacrifice for us. And I know that they did that and I appreciate that greatly. And so you know about sacrificial living for, for others and Jesus wants us to do the same thing with, where we put him first and we are in that, that partnership. So sacrifice is a partnership. And when we, we've talked about this many times, that when we know that everything that we have belongs to the Lord in the first place, and that he will take care of us. So when we aren't concerned so much about our stuff, but we're more concerned about Jesus, and we trust him to take care of us. And um, that's what he hopes for. So in the Beatitudes, where he is teaching, and that teaching goes on. That teaching goes on. We heard part of it ahead of... Um, that portion where we are the salt. And if the salt loses its saltiness, it's not anything, it's not any good. And so we are reminded in the Beatitudes that Jesus teaches. Philippians says, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Jesus Christ. Needs, not wants. I remember um, one afternoon, I don't even remember what it was about, but I was with, with the grandchildren and and I said something about needing something, and my oldest granddaughter said to me, now, is this a need or is this a want? And so needs aren't always wants. And so even from the mouths of young people, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we, uh, we hear those words. And, Jesus, and so when Paul is telling us that God will meet all of our needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus, that's not necessarily about all of our Wants. And so we just keeping that in place. Now, the church at Philippi was the first church for Paul to um, support him financially. And they didn't just support him financially, but they supported him in prayer. And they continued to support him even when he wasn't there. They supported him financially when others didn't or couldn't. They continued to lift him up and to support him because they believed in, in Jesus and what he was doing in his ministry. And so they saw great value in continuing to support him, not out of obligation, but out of seeing the great value in, in the, the love of, of Jesus and to do this, 
this outreach for Paul. And so for them to sacrifice, they saw Paul's sacrifices and they, they also sacrificed for Paul. And so there's ways that we can reach out and keep missions and we do that in supporting various missions. And right now I think about um, UMCOR being our United Methodist, uh, part of our United Methodist Church that is so faithful to be first responders to areas of tragedy and areas of of great needs, so as we support them, we we are helping others that are far away from us. And so, reminding that sacrifice has a cost, and um, Second Samuel says, "No, I insist on paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing." And so that comes from from David speaking and saying, "I'm not." somebody was going to give him something for free. And he said, well, no, if I have it for free and I haven't earned it and it didn't cost me anything and I offer it to the Lord, then it's not really a sacrifice to the Lord. If I got it like that, I want to pay for it because I want it to be an offering to the Lord and I want it to have cost me something. And so the question for us to ask is what has, what does following Jesus cost you? Um, and sometimes it means, it means allowing the vine to be pruned, just like the vineyard and the, um, the person who prunes the vineyard so that they have good grapes. You get rid of the stuff that isn't any good and it, you prune it back and you cut it back. And so sometimes we need to allow God to prune us and get rid of things that maybe aren't helpful or healthy for us. And so maybe it costs us giving up old habits or old positions or addictive vices or whatever it might be so that we can be all in for, for the Lord. And so that could be a cost for us. And so we like to be part of something that requires sometimes in our society today. We like to be, there's um, the feeling that we want to be part of something that has minimal commitment, something that doesn't take very much time doesn't hurt our checking account, nor make us feel uncomfortable, and then we're good with that. And so if it doesn't take much time, it doesn't, it doesn't really cost us anything. It doesn't make us feel funny. Um, that's what we want to sign up for. But in the Bible's description and in Paul's description, it's, that's not sacrifice. And sometimes big sacrifices are the result of little ones that have um, been happening over a period of time. And so in Matthew 25, Jesus, sa- Jesus teaches us that if we are faithful in the small things, he will put us in charge of many things. If we are faithful in the small things, the Lord will put us in charge of many things. And so... Paul is a wonderful example as he, he celebrates being in prison, being in chains for Jesus because it was a chance for him to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. He, ha- he was able to be a witness to the people that were there, to the guards, to the people that were in the prison. And so he, he was thankful for that opportunity We don't always think about things that happen to us as opportunities to do something else for Jesus. But Paul was that that example of how he thanked God for the opportunities he had, even in misery, to do something for Jesus. And so it is a partnership. It's going to have a cost associated with it. And the question is, do you want to be united with Jesus more than the world? The other thing that goes right along with our, um, our love statement is that sacrifice comes from love. And that's that outward focus that takes the attention off of ourselves and puts it on serving Jesus and the needs of others. And so in Matthew 16, it says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. And so if we want to to be that person, we just have to keep our our eyes on Jesus and united in that space. And the church does that together. There is great, um, 
great benefit and great power for the Lord in that space. Lots of different scriptures that tell us, but I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. No to self and yes to Jesus. Sometimes we need reminded because I believe that even though I am speaking to many believers in our congregation and many followers of Jesus Christ, sometimes we need to be reminded of these things because God has a plan and it may take us out of our comfort zone. God has a plan that may move something around that we aren't so happy about. But if the ultimate purpose is to reach others for Christ, it will be okay. But sometimes we like it just the way it is. And if something shifts, we aren't happy about that. And so I believe God has the ultimate plan. So we need to be reminded about where we're aligned and where we are. So that when those things happen, we can, we can go and move ahead without thinking, oh no. And sometimes our things that we get stuck on, we get stuck on crazy stuff and we're all human and we all get stuck in that same place. We get stuck on a piece of furniture maybe that gets moved to another spot or um, just something that we're used to and all of a sudden it's different and we don't like it because we were used to it the other way. And so when we look at this, sometimes we get stuck on the wrong stuff, even though we're we are followers of Jesus. And so it's a reminder to us that there's a great mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world is, is the United Methodist that, you know, to make make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. But the commission comes from Matthew 28, 19 and 20. And so we have a purpose, which means sacrificial things have to happen sometimes. And so we can't get stuck on things that aren't as important. So it's a reminder to us, even though this may be old to us as far as news, a reminder to check where we are so that we're ready to move forward so we are aligned with what God has for us. And so the greatest thing is that Jesus paid the price in full. We have our sins have been paid for in full. Jesus paid it all. And so we, as we look at that, are we willing to surrender it all to him, the one who paid the greatest sacrifice for each one of us? Are we ready to give him everything and and just give give it freely and say, it's yours, Lord, trusting him that he will provide for everything we need and then looking to count our blessings to know he's already provided And so I encourage us today as we sing our closing hymn to think about where is it that you might be stuck? Where might you be stuck and not be surrendering at all? And how can you surrender all of it so you can be ready for the rest of the journey? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much that you remind us, your scriptures remind us that sometimes we don't like sacrifice. Sometimes we don't want to make the commitment that's going to take our time. Sometimes we just have our priorities mixed up. And we've lost the priority of putting you first. So, Lord, may we put you first in our lives. Help us. Guide us and direct us. And may it be that it's, we can surrender it all, trusting that you will provide us with all of our needs. For your purposes and for your kingdom, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.